Hello everyone, uh, this is Khaled again with uh, uh, another video on uh, OnStep. In this video, uh, I'm going to discuss the periodic error correction and how you can install a whole effect sensor to uh, help with this feature. The periodic error correction feature is basically uh, for every uh, worm uh, gear rotation uh, there are imperfections in the design of the or in the manufacturing of the of the gear so the 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 movement will not be completely linear there will be parts of the worm rotation that would be uh, fast and parts that would be uh, slow so this shows up in uh, in uh, stars uh, as you know the stars moving back and forth on the axis perpendicular to where the right ascension is um, so in order to, to overcome this, um, there is a periodic error connection feature in OnStep and uh, some other uh, controllers. Uh, what happens is that it records the, the position in the, in the worm gear and then the correction. So you first have to teach it you know, on a star, so using an auto-guiding camera or uh, even an eyepiece with, uh, with, a star, with a reticle in it and uh, keep the, the star in the center of the, of the reticle and only using the east-west corrections uh, uh, you, you do guiding to, to move it back if it drifts uh, one way or the other so um, uh, the, the, the way to do this is basically uh, with uh, uh, the easiest way there are many ways to do it basically you just want uh, a sensor that would tell on step that oh I'm, I'm at position zero in the uh, uh, the warm uh, the worm gear so to do this we have this whole effect sensor basically what this whole effect sensor is that it's something that detects a magnet and would uh, turn the, the the signal on or off uh, once it detects the magnet okay or there are, there are modules like this one okay uh, actually the module came with this short uh, whole effect sensor I tried to solder uh, a new one with a longer one so that it can reach I'll show you later how it would it would fit on the inside the mount uh, but uh, I bought the solder here so this module is now useless I'll tell you how how to get over this but this is what a whole effect sensor looks like uh, it has a side that is uh, flat and the side that is uh, um, with, with a hump in it and uh, the most common type is 3144 and it's 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 available on eBay you can get five or ten for like a dollar so one pin is five volts one pin is ground and the third pin the rightmost pin is the data which tells you that if a magnet has been detected or not on the on step uh, at least on the STM32 uh, uh, this is how the pins uh, are laid out so we need PEC the, the periodic error connection pin the five volt and the ground the other two are are ignored so three volt in case your sensor is three volt so far I haven't seen uh, on eBay any that are uh, are three volts and then there is the reticle pin which is the final feature in OST in, in the STM32 that needs to be implemented of course the other uh, boards the max PCB and the mini PCB they do have uh, different uh, wiring but I want to show you you know how a test program would would work here so what I what I've done here is that I wired uh, this same PEC 5 volt and ground here with this with this wire and at the end of the wire here there is a, there is a there is a, the sensor here now if I move a magnet in a specific uh, way if I move the magnet here now what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to make this a bit so that you can see it Okay. Now, what I did is I wrote, I wrote a simple uh, uh, sketch that just detects the the magnet. Look, look when I when I do this. Okay, that's not what what was planned. Okay, but look look at the at the light in here. There is a green a green LED that goes off on. See, when the magnet is is close and it's not touching, the light goes on. See that. Now, 
the magnet is polar so if I if I do this on the other side of the magnet it won't happen but if I do the other pole on the other side of the magnet it would light up so you need to check which way you you use the magnet okay you see so this pole on this side or the other pole on the other side okay um, I'll show you the, the sketch Okay, so this is the sketch. It's very simple. Uh, all it does is that it, it assigns uh, uh, the uh, whole effect sensor to PC14, which is the one that we're using on the STM32, and an LED. Uh, it happens to be PC13 on the blue pill. And all it, it says here is that if you do, if the if the pin goes low, okay, if the pin goes low here. Okay, then just turn the LED on and, and print something on the serial port. That's all there is. So this is a, a, a custom sketch. Uh, what I will do also is uh, is that I'll show you the... Uh, so this is in on, in on step. All, all you need to do is change two, two parameters. One is tech sense. It has to be pull up. That's how the STM32 would work. If you don't do the pull up, it won't work. It would, it would the voltage will float, uh, and then the peg sense stayed low. Okay. Once you do this, then your your controller is, is all set to detect uh, periodic error correction. Uh, why is it important? Uh, here is an example of uh, stars in uh, the Milky Way near uh, the star called Mepsuta. This is a post on the, uh, look at, look at, look at how the, they wiggle left and right like that. This is the, the periodic error of the worm, okay? And now with a, with a feature of, uh, there's a feature called, an unrelated feature called uh, full dual axis compensation. And what it does is that it, it corrects for you the polar alignment error. Uh, in uh, in on step and you can see that how the stars went from that long to just this but still you can see on the bottom picture the oscillation left and right so if i implement back my hope is that uh, this would go away and then i can be able to do uh, five minutes or you know seven minutes unguided uh, images i also want to show you the uh, the whole effect sensors and uh, this is the module I was I was using okay so here is here is the module so this is the whole effect sensor here uh, and I was hoping that uh, because it had a hole already and I can attach a, a screw to it but uh, since I botched it with the soldering of, of this area then I'll, I'll have to use one of the standalone ones uh, which look like this Okay, three one four four is the is the term you you should search for, and once you here it is three one four four, and five or ten for for like a dollar or so. Um, so let me now move you to the to the mount and see where where I will be uh, mounting this or how how I plan to to mount this. Okay, so we're now at the mount, and uh, what I'm planning to do is that. This is the magnet here, okay, and let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, so this is this is the magnet, okay. I'm planning to, to make a bracket. This one is, is cardboard, but uh, I need to make something that's uh, plastic or something. I, I need to check, and then what I'll do is I'll run the wire here and fix the, the sensor. Uh, we know that the basic sensor works, and uh, it will with, with the proper configuration I showed you. Uh, that's all that needs to be done. So if I if I'm able to to fix the center so here so that it will detect the magnet, and then the wires would go like this, all the way from here to down where the port is. So in, in here is where the where the wire would go out, and then I can uh, 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 you know connect it to the on-step box. Yes, I'm still using a cardboard. 
box uh, for the last eight months or so. Uh, that's fine. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not in a rush to get uh, a 3D printed one. And uh, the whole idea of this on step is to deal with this kind of weather. So we've had a complete thaw and this is supposed to be spring. But as you can see, we've had a huge snow, snowfall and it even made the branches go down, uh, which means that I won't be able to observe for uh, a few more days. But uh, after that, I can keep the mount outside and control it from from uh, the warmth of, uh, uh, of indoors. Okay, I hope that this uh, 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 is useful to someone with for the uh, implementing the periodic error correction. Uh, one more word about periodic error correction. Uh, there are two opinions on whether it should uh, work with auto-guiding or not. There are people who say no, auto-guiding and periodic error connection fight each other. And there are, there are other people who say no, they work alongside fine. There is no problem with that. So uh, for me, I'm not planning to use the auto-guiding, so this is not an issue for me. But for the rest of, uh, of you, then uh, uh, you need to experiment and see if, if, uh, if there are anything. Howard says, they can work together. So the fact that they can fight each other is probably a problem with other specific uh, manufacturers of controllers uh, where um, PEC would try to move the something uh, one way and then auto-guiding would move it another way and then they, they kind of conflict. Um, so just be aware of uh, that this uh, debate is going on in the community and it has never been resolved one way or the other. Uh, for me, it's not a problem. I don't plan to auto-guide. And I'm doing this so that I stay away from auto-guiding and more cables and more power and more weight and more things to go wrong. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Bye.